Hi everyone, this is Vivian with The Hive. I'm here today with mixologists from Global Chem and Zach Fontaine from the G-Men. Um, we're doing a series where we sit down with different players from different teams and just kind of get to know them and, uh, you know, bring some life into the league. We, you know, when we're, when we're in the game, we all look the same, like exactly the same. And uh, it's, good, it's good to know that, you know, that we're people and um, you know, we're actually all friends outside. So uh, welcome to uh, Mix and Zach. Welcome, guys. Hey, thank you. Um, so G-Men and, uh, and Global Chem, you guys faced off, right, already? Yeah. Last season? yeah How it was, was it? It was better in match. Uh, or it was better in London than it was on VRML, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. Well, like, yeah. Better seeing in person? It was closer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was actually sitting on the sidelines at home watching that, and it was just – I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. You guys played great. Yeah, thanks. It was, it was intense. It was uh, a, lot of, a lot of stopping and going. That was weird. That was different, like having the commercial breaks and all, all the right. tech issues and all that stuff. It was a right. different experience for sure. Yeah. So, actually, G-Men, you guys were um, – you guys went through the wild card, was it? The challengers? Uh, we qualified through the second batch of the ESL part, so the second set of cups. And then there was like a little finals thing. I think there were like four teams in there that went, and we won out of that. That's cool. So there's hope, right? I mean, because you guys are one of the top teams, but it was it, – you kind of can't don't know sometimes where people are going to end yeah. up. So. Especially that ESL format, the three rounds a lot different. I mean, you get capped on, it's pretty devastating. Uh, do you want do you like that do you think we should do that for I kinda liked it. yeah it put a lot more on the line and i like the quick matches it was we're doing how they did it on one day i think that's the only way you could do it i mean it'd be too long otherwise it was already like four hours every sunday oh well, you're right yeah it cuts it down and it makes things just way higher stakes like you really have to be on point how's um zach how is uh g-men handling season eight oh good i mean we're all just uh kind of having fun and playing we're not uh I wouldn't say we're ramped up right now, really, because we don't know of anything coming up. But I mean, we're just enjoying the the weekly matches and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you guys play for fun. Tell me the truth. <laughs> I mean, we're all very Type A competitive assholes. So I mean, as soon as <laughs> right. I didn't have to say it, you Mix didn't have to say it. He said it. It's all good. <laughs> as soon as we're in the match, I mean, we want to win. But yeah, that's, uh, that's we're kind of having fun right now. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Globo, I know, you know, you guys haven't lost any games yet this season. Um, but how is it when you're Globo? I mean, I'm sure you guys always feel like targeted. Oh, yeah. Everything's scrutinized. Definitely. We got we to gotta watch what we do during the regular season because we know the beginners are always studying. Um, it, it's interesting. But at the same time, it's, it's fun. We always got each other's backs and it's a solid group. Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you some questions now. Um, think about it. If you weren't on G-Man and you were on Globo, where would you want to go? Don't say each other's team. That is so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually put a lot of thought into that. Um, oh, okay. Had a few team offers this season as well from some legit teams. I mean, I think, oh, that's so nice. Everyone gets offers. I don't get offers, but I heard other people. <laughs> Must feel nice. But, but yeah, I mean, I could, uh, I could see myself playing for SMC, see myself playing for G-Men, see myself playing for maybe Blaze. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I mean, there's a lot of talent out there. And, I mean, Globo isn't the only team out there with talent for sure, but we are good. Bam, you guys do gel well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Zach? Well, if you take Globo off the table, because I do like all those guys. Maybe we hung out for a long time. Yeah, no, they're everything. great. They're really uh, great. But I'd say probably Blaze. That'd be yeah. look cool. I mean, I'd like to be with uh, my brother Fontaine. That would be good. They, you know, Are I you guys Fontaine. brothers? No. <laughs> I'm not related at all. That would confuse me. I, can, I confuse you guys often. Um, I like but, all those guys. Yeah, because you, you guys are both nice. And sometimes I'm like, no, I played with pre-Fontaine. <laughs> okay. You guys named some kind of fun teams, but they're good. Is that, like, what sticks out in your mind? You're like, I like the people. I want to have fun. Or, you know. What? Hi. Hey, look at me and say hi. <laughs> She's scared of Eva. <laughs> no. um, yeah. So, like, what what is it about the teams that you're thinking? You know, I would play with them. Definitely the people and the play styles for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and being good, like you said, I mean, I want people to take it seriously. You want to win. Oh. 
Yeah, well, name a team that doesn't want to win. I'm curious. <laughs> well, I think uh, uh, I think when you're at least what I'm saying, like, I, I want a, a team like how mixed that he plays almost like every night and then mm -hmm. put the time in to be good and yeah. homework on other teams and that kind of stuff. I mean, that's that's one of the main factors. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, I mean, you know, it's like my second season, so it's a lot to study and learn. And um, I think at some point, like for me right now, of course I want to win. And I do work hard. I mean, next, you know, you see me, well, when I'm not messing around, but, you know, I do put in my hours and try and get better. But I guess I'm still at the point where it's like, if I'm not having fun, this is going to be brutal for me. Well, <laughs> just that's the fine line and onward, too, is, I mean, even in league game or just practice, if you're not having fun, your head's not in it. I mean, I really right. don't think there's any teams in the league that per se don't want to win. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are teams out there that are definitely more goofing off and screwing around than taking things seriously. What teams do you guys love to face off with? Like, you're like, yeah, that's awesome. It's going to be tough, but I love these guys. It's fun to play with them, against them. Uh, for me, I'd have to say Danglers is a really fun one to face off just because of their really fast and aggressive play style. Uh, you never know when and how they're going to hit you. Um, same thing with G-Men. I mean, they're they're a hard team to face up against, and they come at you pretty hard. But wait, Zach, you're new on G-Men, right? Yeah, I think I switched over like in April, something like that. So it's been a few months. But uh, like early on, maybe a year ago or so, I was uh, talking about joining them, but then they ended up picking up Peasley instead, and that's when I went to Phoenix. So oh, I see. I've been talking with them for a while. I like all those guys, and we always play together and stuff. And then. I hung out with uh, the man down at OC5 and all that. So mm -hmm. the man. He, he's he's garbage. <laughs> yeah. The man. Yeah, he's I love a, the man. Yeah, he's he's fun. He's a confusing one because he's like really really like mean but jokingly mean but for real kind. Of, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's funny. It's hard to uh, yeah, he's a big teddy bear. Yeah. No, I'm sure. I'm sure all of you are. Um, I'd be, I would be surprised if you guys were actually that aggressive in real life. <laughs> no. no, there were no wild street fights or anything. In, yeah. In At OC5, like, you guys, met, you know, you guys met up. Was there, like, any surprises, like, when you were there, when you were meeting people? You're like, oh, my God, hey, it's, that's you. You know what I mean? Oh, for, for sure. Like I said, there was a whole bunch of people that showed up that I didn't expect to see just because oh, yeah? they didn't make it and whatnot. Um, one that hit me hard was Willow the Wisp and Donna. Where, oh, yeah. um, Willow was on my first team. So meeting them in real life was awesome. But then just everybody else, I had no idea they were going to just be random showing up being like, hey, we're here. What up? <laughs> it was very cool. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty that's wild because you hear people's voices that you recognize. You'd be like, wait, do I know? And then you act like you're not sure if you know them or not. And you just kind of wave and you think you know what they look like. But then you're like, I'm pretty sure that's that person's voice. I mean, it's yeah. it fun. Like at the after party thing. Yeah, you know, you should carry like a scoreboard around and then put it in front of their face and have them talk and see them. They sound familiar <laughs> to you. <laughs> <laughs> a little Marsock helmet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it is cool. Like you get to know people's voices. I mean, that's the same with any VR app. I guess you just pick them out with their voices, which is how I know what team I'm on. Usually I'm going to, I'm just going to ask you, I know you guys are guys, but like whose voice do you just love? Who? I, I gotta say, yeah, the swooty and the man. I think the man's hilarious. <laughs> the man. Okay. He's For so being funny. funny. Yeah. And, and you said swooty? Swooty. He's just got that soothing, just mm, I could talk radio all day voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess so yeah i did i did interview sweetie he does i he must be trained in it because he speaks in such a way that he knows somebody has to chop up the interview okay? <laughs> like kinda, you know what i mean you're good because, in a lot of credit well i mean um scooby he was great like he had so much to say and really energetic but i couldn't chop up anything he said because it would mess up what he just said but sweetie was very like Yes, and this is my thoughts and long pause. This yeah, he's very polished. He's very, very, very concise. At the DSL, we would put him up. <laughs> they came to talk to somebody after the match. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mix, you said you played with Willow. What other team did you play on? Oh, uh, the first couple seasons I was on Ghost Riders, which is no longer a team. Oh, okay. I heard that name. They, tr 
you know, they turned into what is now Animal House, and a lot of the core members are still there. Willow, Stephen, uh, actually, I think they are the only two core members left now. Uh, okay. We had Nolo Mike back in the day. Ghost, oh wow! Myself, and then Hemingway's Ghost was on the roster. Yeah, so you guys have played with a, with a bunch of different people, and same with you, Zach. Like, how many other teams did you play with? I uh, started out with Stone Cold Killers back when, like, North London was a captain. That was been a while oh. ago. Then I went to Phoenix, and then now G-Men. Okay. So. How, how was it playing under North London? Yeah, I'm it was, curious. It was only for, like, a week or two, and then Dev took over, Miracle Dev. But oh, Okay, so that <laughs> explains a lot. Got it. Um, <laughs> I remember that little Laku. But otherwise, like, what, what is your general opinion about people who switch teams often? Well, I mean, a lot of times, even with real sports, people just – don't agree people don't mesh well together on the field there can be a lot of reasons um but yeah for the most part there has been a lot of people switch teams throughout the years i mean i think the cooldown thing was good uh, introducing that two-week penalty because that makes people a little more apprehensive to jump teams i guess like you don't want to jump teams so often that you're known for that and then you kind of get a reputation as being somebody that's flighty so anytime i've went right. with the teams because i plan on being there a long time there are some people out there that they've been on a lot of teams. <laughs> right. Yeah. We don't even have to name them. We know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, I guess because you guys are, you know, on the top. So when you find the team, like for instance, Global, you guys have all pretty much kept your roster, you know? Yeah. For the most part, we're, yeah. we've been pretty blessed with that. Yeah. And uh, I just remember reading about Global about how like once you guys got – like the fit you know with everyone in just kind of rounded everyone out and with the personalities and everything and and I think we can tell how how teams jive when we watch you guys on cast or in lobbies so I kind of like I guess I maybe because for me when I watch you guys I'm like a fan like I'll be a fan of that team but then if someone leaves it's like oh that's kind of not the same team anymore you know like I, I love Animal House I still love Animal House but Silent Night's not on there and now right. I think Fox Toys isn't on there so, I mean, it's, it's still the same guy. I still love them, but it's like, oh, no, it's their identity or something. That's weird. And Silent, he's been playing a lot of reservists lately, too. At least he's getting his field time. He's in Blaze now. He did get picked up on Blaze? Yeah. Nice. Blaze. Heck, yeah. Good for him. Yeah, Blaze is a fun team. Um, and speaking of which, G-Men, um, I, I, I don't think you were playing with them yet, but I know they played against Blaze. Are you guys like – res the enemy and just this oh, yeah. pistols only yeah i remember watching that that's pretty funny what what teams do you guys um like have any of those traditions with i can't imagine globo would do anything like that but oh no if you're down we try and keep you down oh. I mean, what i can think of is uh when we played globo last with vrml the last match uh leo had to go somewhere so we ended up playing 5v4 but arsenic agreed to use a bold action the whole time oh that's funny so that was kind of fun <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, stuff like that. I think that's really um, pretty funny. Like, I don't know if you saw, but uh, Lords of War played Ember, and they all rushed to the middle um, middle house in suburbia, and then they hugged. <laughs> and then they I saw that. Back. That was cute. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, you can't, you can't do that, like, during matches, I guess, that count, but I like those kinds of things, and wondering how you guys kind of pepper that in. The, the camaraderie is is awesome i mean the first event just i mean the love shown everybody's giving each other hugs after matches like the, the community is is awesome so what about the your your real life your your family what do they think about you playing do they even know you play or like do they watch your games how's that go yeah mine my, my definitely know because i'm sitting here in the living room for hundreds of hours oh <laughs> you're playing in your living room okay <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah i mean uh, my extended family kind of once once we got to london everything that kind of legitimized it i guess a little bit and uh, made it easier uh my wife kind of gives me some crap for playing all the time but that, that made it better although she didn't go with me because uh it was like a few months out and i was like hey you better get your passport if you want to go with us and she's like oh, i don't think you guys likely make it so she didn't do the paperwork oh. and all that stuff oh so. Um, Wait, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I've had, actually had my dad and uh, his girlfriend come over and a couple other family members and throw them through the ropes. I've got like the steering wheel set up. So I put my dad through project cars and all that goodness. Okay. And 
my stepmom, she didn't really like the driving. She kind of got motion sickness from the driving, but everything else she was okay with. But everybody, uh, at first, they're kind of overwhelmed. They really didn't expect it, you know? And then afterwards, it, it's like all they can talk about for a couple weeks. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, about VR in general? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, like, okay, I can't imagine, Zach, you play in your living room. I mean, that's pretty disruptive to your family. <laughs> <Yeah. And they're... laughs> well, we got, like, two different living rooms. We got, like, okay. kind of, like, my living room, I guess. Okay, like, family, like, family room, living yeah. room. I gotcha. Um, can you get your wife to play? She's played a few times, yeah, because uh, my daughter's got a pretty good PC, and I got a mixed reality headset, so I'll set it up sometimes in the same room so when my buddies come over or something. And she played with us, with us and, like, Ocean Dolph and a few others. That was from Edna. It was fun. Yeah, but so she couldn't figure out how to run. That was the problem on the, the Vive wands. She couldn't. Oh, moving. yeah. So she like, uh, like an old grandma the whole time. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I played originally on, on the Vive, but I switched over to the Rift cause, just because of the, the pads would get stuck. But we're always looking for our ladies to play. I know. I keep trying to get her to play it again, but she, <laughs> she played it like that one time for a few hours, and that's it. Um, we were big. I uh, played the Werewolves Within a lot. We played that together because I have a PlayStation VR too, so we'd play it online okay that's pretty fun nice. is she a gamer in general not really but that one she was pretty into okay that's cool oh uh, <laughs> my i don't think my family knows they don't know my mom doesn't know i have a talk show and i've had it for over two years so <laughs> wow so, yeah maybe i should go play in their living room I mean, <laughs> uh what about your kids they oh, like, they, they love VR. Like, uh, that was when Ellie just came in a little bit ago. She was wanting, because I got a steering wheel set up. I was playing Dirt Rally earlier. She wanted to play it again because I had a uh, couple pillows put in there so she could reach the pedals and stuff. Here she is again. But yeah, nice. she always plays that and wants to play Drop Tune later on the Quest all the time. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you have the Quest too? Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah it. So, all right. Name your headsets. What do you guys all have? Let's see, I got the Mixed Reality, the Original Vive, the Vive Pro, the. Quest, PlayStation VR. Jeez. I think that's it. Hmm. <laughs> I got that's the uh, Oculus, the Vive, and the Oculus Rift S, which I am returning today because I didn't like it. Yeah, what, what didn't you like about it? I tried it before too. Um, um, for Onward specifically, I could aim and all the aiming was fine, which that was I expected to be the main issue, but it was the running. I couldn't even keep up with my team. I think that was the 80 hertz. And then throwing your nades was a nightmare. Like, I killed myself with a nade during our league game with it, and I was just done. Yeah, you're done. You're not even going to bother. No. So I found a, a rift on uh, Craigslist for 225 so I snagged oh, that right, right after our league game. Because yours blacked out. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. I was actually there, Sorry. and I recorded it, and I was laughing because I, when you said, I can't see anything, I thought you were just dying. And so I was like, oh, there he goes, you know, I have it on the He's screen. He's fading away. Yeah. But, oh, dang, that sucks. Yeah, because of the support and everything. Do you think, though, that they'll move to Rift S, though, to play Onward? Like, officially? I actually asked, I asked Globo in that, our meeting, and everybody was very apprehensive, like, oh, no, why would they do that? Why would they do that? And I don't know, man. It would be easier on ESL for setup, for one. That would be a big thing for them. They wouldn't have to deal with cameras. Yeah. And I don't know, but... uh. It would be interesting if they would. There'd be a lot of fumbles on stage. Yeah, I mean, it struck me as odd just from a business standpoint that they had the Rift S come out like a few weeks before our live event and they weren't showcasing it. But I mean, I, I get why, because especially with the tracking update I had then, it was pretty bad for Onward or looked bad. But it was just surprising they're using old hardware for it. So I, I'd yeah. be shocked if they don't eventually go to it. Yeah, like, I guess, like, officially. That would, I guess it was, it was suck. I feel like, um, though, for esports, though, you kind of have to, like, keep you have to keep with the highest grade you know that you can for the players you know what I mean and just I mean you know cause it's so important there's like 500 of us total in all of VR that play esports but but I mean that's what I mean it was like the rift s I'm like god I hope they don't make us all move to it that would suck the speed thing wouldn't be such an issue the 80 hertz if everybody was on it because everybody'd be moving the same speed but you would see everybody hating life with grenades and smokes. Yeah, well, which they do now anyway. Um, so since uh, there's no rules or anything with which what you can play with, um, do you guys have any, like, beef with people when they play in, like, the Pimax or anything? Or are you just like, yeah, whatever. Or you just know they have the Pimax, so watch out for them. Or the Valve now, I guess. 
I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I might be one of those guys. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> I always, oh, I'll buy whatever the best stuff I can get. Like, I got the three base stations now, which is nice, because before, like, I only had, with the two base stations, if you aim right at it with the stock, it's, it gets occlusion, starts your hand, starts shaking. So, yeah, that's been nice. And then the wireless is really cool, being able to spin around free. There, there's a few guys that play wireless, like I know Mano does, and I think Driver a Car. They play wireless? Lucky. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I love wireless. It's just that, like, I can't imagine you'd be faster. I would think that you'd be slower or something just because. There's no real latency. Like when you turn your head and stuff, you don't notice anything. And then like, well, here's my headset. You kind of do have to modify it a little bit. Like I've got a 3D printed thing I designed and a fan to cool it because it would like overheat and get pixelated after playing for a few hours. But once you kind of get the hang of it, it's pretty reliable. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm going to have to check that out. I mean, you see my play space. It's super small. It's like. Very, very tiny. Yeah, if you hear me bumping into things, that's my wall over there that I totally run into. Um, yeah, I always hit that bar. <laughs> I'd say if you had the Vive and index controllers, you could kind of do what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I got I got the index. All, all the Colettos get an index. Isn't that cool? Ooh, that is yeah. very cool. Don't you want to be a Coletto now? Um, but we do have, like, I thought a really good, like, push of new teams new players coming in from last season like do you guys think oh, we don't wanna, we don't really care we're we're top teams i don't even notice them or like no. not know? at all the more the merrier in fact i'm I'm glad to see more teams coming in even rebranded teams um mm -hmm. like i said the more the merrier we need uh we need as much action in the vr master league as we can yeah yeah especially i'm even glad to see other games the newer teams are dangerous because they're willing to do stuff that lot, they're not used to the same spots and everything we're all used to. So they might be doing something totally different that you're not expecting. So yeah. every team's dangerous. So, yeah, we're dangerous. You watch out. We're tiny. So, <laughs> <laughs> although I do find that some veterans don't like to share, I guess, their secrets. Do you guys have secrets that right. you're like, no, 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 you have to learn that on your own kind of a thing? I don't more, think anything like that with casting. I mean, it's all kind of out in the open. Yeah, more right. movement and spots. Um, I'm very weary of spots that I'll use if games are being casted, that kind of thing, because I know I won't be able to use that spot again. Um, other than that, not really. Not use that spot again. Mm -hmm. There's there's like certain little areas in like cargo, like I was using a little uh the corner of the map to like draw shields out and like i've used that a couple times now so i'm so weary about it i won't use it against shield players that i've killed with all the new weapons coming out like do you guys honestly it, it overwhelms me and i'm new still that i'm just like well, more weapons more changes and stuff like how do you guys take that are you welcoming to i said i, I think i think the m203 uh i think people are more scared of it than they need to be i mean that it's one shot and it's not much more cheap than a good grenade really. But, mm -hmm. and you have so much recoil too, you can't use a foregrip with it. So it's kind of balanced oh, yeah. out. Yeah, for cargo and stuff like that, it's probably a little OP, but uh, I've been yeah. trying to use it just for the inevitable time that's going to be unbanned, so. Yeah. What about you, Mix? For me, I don't mind them at all. But yeah, like you said, for small maps of cargo and suburbia, they can be a little overpowered, especially right off the gate. Um, can't even get out of spawn sometimes. Do you guys have a favorite caster? Hmm. I miss Buxton. Oh. Buxton is great. Buxton is really great. Yeah. Yeah, he does have that nice. I'd have voice. to I'd have to say my favorite caster is a drunken lonely viper. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he just got married too. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah congratulations, Viper. I know you're watching. So, um, all right, let me show you this video here. exact same time and that was really fun um i know that snake bite got mad because i was it was a little bit drunk word for me but snake was like shut up vivian but that was like 
That was hilarious. So do you guys have any other like funny moments that you just like think back to when you're playing with people in your team? Or... There's so many of them. I mean, during our uh, our warm up scrim the other day, freaking we were playing cargo. It's first or second map, and uh, Otto accidentally sets off his C4. <laughs> Blows up all four of our teammates except for me. So I had to run back and res one guy so he could res everybody else. It was a shit show. But I just love it when stuff like that happens. Yeah, I know. You gotta laugh at it. Um, what about you, Zach? Do you guys yeah, our, last, uh, our last Space Force match, there was a moment on Suburbia we got on, because uh, Weinhardt was streaming it, so we, we heard it from his side. But it was, uh, Swooty had a C4 on him, and he was going to flank. And uh, four or four thought he threw it, so he told Brass, who had the clacker, to blow it. And you hear Sweetie go, "No!" And then poof, just blows up. <laughs> it's so funny to hear it from the lobby, from Lightheart perspective. Yeah, I um, I saw a bit of that stream actually, because that would have been a really fun match to watch because you guys crushed them. <laughs> like, and Space Force has been doing really well, so I was really like surprised. But um, Lionheart just had like one clip. I think where he was just like, it's not that bad. And then the screen goes black. He's like, oh, that's bad. Yeah, that was <laughs> what I shot Hooney half. I just saw like a little head peeking over that new overturned Humvee on quarantine. And I was like, that doesn't look right. And I shot at it and it was, you know, I saw it go down. I was like, oh, that was a person. He's like the only person tall enough to actually do that. Oh, yeah. yeah you see his head over things all the time. He is, he is tall. I wish I was taller. I'm sure, yeah. I'm trying to be a little sneakier, but I can't stop g giggling, I guess, sometimes. Are you guys active in the Onward Discord? I wouldn't really say active. Like when everything when everything cool's happening, I'm stuck at work, so I'm like kind of with greasy hands, kind of trying to look and not type. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely there. It's on my phone. If I'm tagged, I'm always right there to check, try to be at least. Yeah, um, because like, what what do you guys? <clears throat> we at our last episode, we were talking about mix how like. Um, you're like one of our favorite global can not, not because we you know I really do like everybody else and it's, they're really nice whenever I need to reach out to them for anything but you play in our lobbies all the time so we've really gotten to know you well and mm -hmm. and g-men too like you know you guys come in here and there and so um, blaze are always fun but like what do you guys do to kind of like keep the community going you do or do nothing you're like no I just I'm here to play I think the big thing now is like every when, night. And when there's new players, like, don't be a jerk to them. Like, if they're making an effort to, to at least try to explain the game to them and that kind of thing, don't just kick them automatically when they first come in. All just right. Listen to what you're saying and try to help. Even um, yeah. even in a comp lobby? Oh, Zach made himself. <laughs> oh, sorry, my kid's here again. It's okay. <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah, even lately it's been happening some in comp lobbies. Like, last night the new patch dropped. I mean, I... I've got sympathy if there's no other lobbies up because like a lot of times now it's just been co-op. Uh, so the only up. Yeah. Yeah. So. I can't remember the guy's name, but yeah, he's definitely new and the only comp lobby up and we, we didn't want to get rid of him because then he wouldn't have been able to play at all. There were no other lobbies, but we were definitely throwing him pointers here and there and he was soaking it up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, we, you know, we had the rookie boot camp stuff, but I just never understand that. Like I understand people being impatient you know, or if they're being jerks, but there's a lot of people who really just are intimidated. It's intimidating, you know, to go in to a competitive lobby not knowing. Because, like, now that I play, like, I'm not, it's not as bad, you know, like, I'll just play even if I suck. I, I know, I know enough of the game where I'm not, like, totally lost, but I remember what it was like to be new, you know, and, like, not wanting to join comps. I was like, yeah, just join it. And, like, yeah, no, I don't, I'm not comfortable. Yeah, but I actually watched the Pavlov VM, VRML match yesterday, and I was like, hey, I'm just visiting from Onward. And they're like, oh, you're here to watch the other half live? And they're like, or the nine tenths? And I was like, yeah, that sucks. There's definitely more <laughs> people over there. Have you guys played Pavlov? Uh, no. Not appreciable amount, like a few hours, but for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe six hours here and there. Okay. So what makes what makes Onward your game? As opposed to Pavlov or Contractors. Well, for me, I like the I like the gun handling. I think because even like with Contractors and stuff, it just doesn't feel the same. I like the the way you move your weapon, and I like the game mode too. There's more consequence with doing something stupid or doing okay. something smart. So. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Mix? Same. That was the first thing that drew me in was the gunplay. It definitely felt right compared to anything else. Uh, but then back then as well, you could run with your gun straight up the whole time. 
and people that were really good back then were just running maps. And I think that was a, an issue back then and why they uh, resorted to the gun drop to be able to run full speed. That was the first thing I noticed in Pavlov that I really didn't like. You actually had to put your weapons away to run. And that just didn't resonate with me at all. Yeah, it does feel like flimsy, kind of goofy, I guess. And I don't like the economy. Uh, like, I, I just want. I they changed it though, that you can actually run with your gun now. You just have to lower it like an onward. And... Yeah, I think so. I did play it. I did try to do their mode because it's pretty cool how they do. You know, the their bomb, whatever that they have to plant. You know, they put the numbers in because the numbers are right there. You just have to, you know. It's sort of Counter Strike esque, but uh, and that was my game before I got VR. It just oh, really? on, onward resonated with me a lot more. Just more realistic, the pace of it, everything. Yeah, I yes, I, I honestly it, onward. Why I stuck with it is that there's no blood. Really, <laughs> that really is, but but the gun handling it, it feels the other ones feel really cartoony. Um, although I have been I've been trying to play Pavlov just because I think it's really cool to kind of like play all the different games. There's different leagues and stuff. So, so um, being on a top team, how many hours do you guys practice a week? Like you, even just yourself, like how many hours do you put in? I think I play like between fifteen and twenty hours a week. Like okay. my team says, like thirty hours in the past two weeks. Last time I looked at it, so. I'm a glutton for punishment. I play four hours a night usually if I can, <laughs> depending <Okay>. on. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I do the same. Um, and it's totally normal. I, I actually, at, when I was thinking about it, it's like, oh my god, that's like a part-time job. But when I tell other people how much I like practice, like twenty hours a week and stuff, they're like, oh my god, like, how do you do that? And it was like, if you don't, I mean, I mean, I don't know what the tipping point is. How many hours do you guys have? Too many. Makes sure you have like over 2,000, 2,700. 2,700 plus. Yeah, something like that. Got uh, 1,175. Okay. See, I have, I just hit 600 hours. <laughs> over 600. And it looks like a lot more because I guess I fell asleep with it on, um, which I don't <laughs> usually do. But, um, but yeah, I mean, um, aside from like me getting to know the maps and everything like that, but what do you, what do you think the tipping point is? Like, can we ever catch up? Can can players ever get to that level? Um, or do you think like nope, nope, it's, it's oh, for be you guys. For sure. I mean, look, look at you, just you yourself. You've shown so much improvement over since just last season. Uh, I mean, it really shows because you you do you play every night and you're putting forth that grind. Anybody can do it. You just got to show the passion too. Yeah, and I think if you're smart about it, like hours 900 through 1100 are way less impactful than like zero to 200. Like, what if you start learning call outs and all that stuff? Once you get that down, I mean, the most of it's just skill and your intelligence and that kind of thing. Right. Oh, yeah, that's true. The, that's what I like about it, actually. The whole like trying to outsmart the other player, like, you know, the rotation, I think it's the really, that's the really hard one, I think, that people really need to learn. Um, is when you're the last one up or there's just two of you is where do you rotate when you feel like there's nowhere to go you know so if you know that there's two enemy left on the white car objective in suburbia and you're marsoc and you're in lane one and you're you know your your guy just died it's just you like where do you go you going straight for it you're gonna go around you don't know where they are you just know there's two enemies it's always situational. I mean, you have to call it when you're in the moment. You you don't know. Okay. Yeah, and I guess that's kind of the thing with, I mean, I guess the amount of hours we have, we know a lot of the different players' tendencies. They kind of, if you know who's on the team who you're playing against, you know a couple spots they're probably going to be at. Yeah, that's, that's also true. Like, um, everyone's always like, well, it depends on who you're playing and, you know, who you know is left and stuff like that. So it's really having to get to know each other. Um, do you think any, do you guys ever purposely not let people know you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I never changed my name. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. The only time I change my name is when I'm playing on mixed reality. I'll put like Zach Fontaine WMR just so people know why I suck. If I oh. Play on that. <laughs> oh, you need to make excuses. Like I don't want, <laughs> I'm sucking right now and you need to know why. Do you, do you have an ego? Does it get wounded? Zach? I don't like losing. Oh, like, okay. 
but, but not really ego. It's just the I don't like losing, especially if it's cast or something. It's just embarrassing. You get stomped. Oh yeah, how is that? I mean, I never know what you guys think. Like to me, when I see people now, it's like um, I know I know what it feels like to be them. So sometimes it's not even I look at like oh they got capped on. I think of oh this person capped you know, like in the more like positive side of it. But I often don't think that people, like especially top players, like think anything of like being embarrassed by it. But like, w w do you have those feelings when you're uh, being casted? I, more nervous? Yeah, just, you don't want to get capped on. Like that's the worst feeling in the world. You feel like you let your whole team down. That's, uh, I hate that. Yep. Oh, yeah, that is the worst. Um, uh, yeah, that's nightmares. Yeah, one of my favorite moments from I, it was like three seasons ago was Bazaar against SMC Tactical, and Sickness just ran into that middle Bazaar and got a cap on us in like 30, 35 seconds flat. Like yeah, to this day, we don't know how he got in there and wiggled <laughs> in, but it just it motivated us and just man, we were everybody was kind of upset at the spawn and whatnot, and it was just like let it go, let it go, next round, don't worry. And then we turned it around and did not let them score one more point the rest of that series. <laughs> Just not done. That's cool. No, that's a good way to like who's the who's the person in Globo that's like, you know, the person that soothes everybody, you know, everyone calm down. Anyways. <laughs> I don't really think we have like any specific one, but I mean, Otto is just like, he is the Zen master. Like mm -hmm. you just always see him sitting there meditating and you know, like you can't get under that guy's skin. <laughs> yeah. He's really nice. Yeah. Um, what about G-Man? Yeah. We don't really have a, I guess a de facto kind of morale boost guy, but we all just kind of stay even keeled. Like the, even when we're losing, there's nobody like blaming each other or that kind of thing, which is huge because some other teams that I've played with and stuff that that happens and that's not good for anybody and, and that kind of stuff. So it's that oh, thing. yeah, for sure. Like um, that's that's why I tell my team like let's not talk about the last map as soon as, as soon as we you know get into the tent, just immediately think about the next one, which is easier said than done. But you you can totally feel it sometimes when you're just like ugh, like. It's your fault. It's my fault. I usually say, like, all right, I'm going to make this call, and if it sucks, then it's on me, okay? So you guys don't have to fight. You can just blame me. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm always uh, I'm always curious about that. Like, um, I'm surprised to hear some teams will be like, oh, no, we were all laughing or, or something like that. Or some teams are like, no, so-and-so just completely stopped talking and, you know, for the rest of the match. And so does that, has that ever happened, ever, with your guys, with you guys' team? Just toast, but toast doesn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually on this interview right now, so uh, <laughs> hi, toast. <laughs> he hasn't said anything. <laughs> Not, I mean, especially with G-Men, we can all handle and give out criticism well, and nobody's ever been uh, upset or anything. I mean, we've, we've all respect each other, so it's, it's helpful. Uh, you guys have a little too much love. I was looking for gossip. So, uh, mix, <laughs> mixologist, where where's your name come from? Oh, back in the day, I was bartending and still Just love to do so. Yeah. Um, I don't have a fully stocked bar at the moment, but there's, there's a little bit back there. Okay. I, I, I try and play around as much as I can with it. Oh, all right. You, you know what? You're the mixologist. You should make a drunk word drink, like a mix Ooh. for us. You know, like this is the drunk word mix. I have I like a really, that. I have a really good one. It's quite romantic, actually. It's um, gin, the little rose flavor, and um, like lime. It's really good and tonic. It's like, mm. it's fizzy and it just has a light little rose taste. You just make it pink. And it's it great. is light too. It's not mm. nothing that's gonna like hurt you too bad. Yeah, you can seduce people with that one. But no, I want like a hardcore like this is a need. You know, has lemonade in it or something like that. It blows <laughs> up in your face and you're 10 feet away. <laughs> Never mind. It's not them, that bad. <laughs> the nades are exploding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you, Zach? Well, your name's Zach, but. Yeah, I mean, I just took the, the, the law off my last name to maintain some anonymity, I guess. But that, <laughs> that was it. It's been a handle for like, uh, I mean, I started out playing console gaming before I got into VR. So I've mm -hmm. just been bad on all platforms. Okay. Uh, simple, simple enough. Um, are there any names of others that you're like, God damn it, that's such an awesome name. Why didn't I think of it? Like that's so. I mean, I know there's quite a few people, but like, even on your team, like 404, I'm like, that's such a great name. Yeah. Really good. And brass, brass mouth, pretty good brass too. Brass mouth. 
Yeah. Brass mouth is awesome. What a great pickup for you guys. He's great. J- yeah. Jizzy pants. Jizzy <laughs> pants. Yeah. <laughs> that just makes you giggle. Um, but yeah, pants. It is funny because some of the te- some of the names are like really like um, self deprecating, which really just Pl- plenis. <laughs> yeah, or like poopachu or something. It's just like I always think that's really funny. Um, but wait, so the man is the man on G Man. Is that was that a coincidence? Uh, I think he had that before he joined G Man. Actually, okay. I think his name was just the man, and then it was the G Man yep. for a little bit, and then yeah, okay. I think he, I think he plays on both. Okay, I thought like he was trying to like own it, like this is my team or something. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure his handle comes from the Half Life series, the actual the G Man in there. Oh, or I, no I could be mistaken. I told, um, I think it was Biggie Smalls that I was talking about, like, if anyone needed help with social media, because I was thinking, like, G-Men, they are totally marketable. You guys could totally use some good PR and, like, get, I know people are like, who cares? I just play a game, but, like, hey, did you guys get free indexes? I don't know. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, Globo, of course, you know, you guys are, you guys have, you've been on, you know, the stage, and G-Men has too, but Globo has, like, a really good name and, um. And then, like, I know uh, Auto is, like, written on V Respawn and all that stuff, too. Um, but I always say that about Gmail. I'm like, if they, have, if they just had some really good PR, man, they could, like, probably pick up some sponsors or something. Um, because, like, the name is cool. Your guys' logo is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, we just guys... started an Instagram and a Twitter. So I think Biggie's running it. He's yeah, I know. It. I, I helped him with it. And, uh, and sometimes I tag you guys on, on, on stuff. Um and it's funny because I'm like, we're like the worst team. We have the most followers. Like, it's like we don't even play. We just come in here and do PR. Um, actually, the team that just came in that has the most is Loyal Dogs from the EU. Um, but they, oh, yeah. They play, yeah, they play other games as well. Um, but, like, how would that feel for you guys if, if it became more than just going in to play onward? If you were suddenly having to do a little bit more in the public eye? Would you like that? I'm cool with it. Uh, I'm not a huge social media person. I mean, I came out of social media retirement just to put pictures of London up on there and stuff, <laughs> but uh, like on Facebook and whatnot. But I, if it was uh, getting me free indexes and stuff like that, I'd be all about it. <laughs> I'm, yeah. not a uh, <laughs> I'm pretty much the same. I didn't do any Instagram or anything like that until the London event. I started one. I had to take the electrical tape off my webcam just to do this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, it's, I know it's hard, you know, like, I won't do what I think, I think Spoody does it, and I'm not sure, Ribo, where they record themselves playing, you know, in the little box. Yeah. Or, I can't do that, because I look ridiculous, and I do legitimately run into things, and it's, <laughs> and it's not, it's not funny when it's happening to me, maybe it's funny when you guys hear me. What do you guys think about the trend of VR esports? Do you think it's going to pick up, or do or you think we really need to have some overhaul to get it going? I think it is going to pick up. I mean, it slowly has been. Um, the more headsets coming out, that kind of thing. Definitely more events, more games getting picked up for the events. It's, it's cool to see the growth, but I'd, I'd like to see it move faster for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping the Quest helps push that because it'll be more accessible to people. Because every time, like Mix was talking about, when I have people over, they check out Onward or something. Like, oh, this is awesome. But then when I tell them it's like two grand to have my setup, then that kind of is a barrier to entry that's too far for most people. When the Quest comes out and Onward's going to be there, don't you think it's going to be such a disadvantage? Or do you think that it will even out? I don't know how it's going to work on like Downfall. That's what I'm interested to see. Or like a big map. Uh, I don't know if it'll help or hurt because if there's less stuff around you might be less hidden than you think you are if there's different yeah. LOD effects and whatnot I don't know I don't know how it's gonna work yeah right. I'm curious about that maybe um in VR chat they have some rooms that are available for quest people and some that are available for non-quest people so the ones that are optimized for quest are allowed on there so I wonder if they would do something like that that's kind of how the Pavlov beta is right now in quest too it's just okay. like a couple maps I haven't done that um but but speaking of um of like downfall uh you know with the whole big update and them adding in all the elements how was that for you guys nobody has feng shui <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah well i do have some complaints about suburbia because it's like 
it's mixing like two eras into one. It's pretty. But why is that couch in the upstairs middle house in the bedroom like that? Who who would line a couch like that? Yeah, but it has like old time like radio kind of stuff, and you don't know right. what that's like. And then and then and then there's a flat screen TV. It's like. And it's tipped over. That, yeah. that hurts my feelings. Yeah. Um. But what did you guys think? Were you guys like walking in like, oh shit, we gotta do some new stuff now? Well, for for us, it dropped while we were over there. So like we like we oh, had right. like, like a day to play on it before we had to. Right. Yeah. I think I had maybe an hour on the new quarantine before we had to play it in London. So they they like to do that to us. <laughs> they yeah. do. I mean, yeah. It's, I remember that now because I'm like, you guys can't. You're seriously not gonna make them play on that, right? Because should like finish up a season on what what you started on yeah but like the I, day we started they added that internal illumination thing so everybody kind of lit up like lanterns so we had to go in downfall and see how lit up you were as volk to figure out what you could see and what you couldn't then mess around with night vision mm -hmm. as we were doing like in the warm-up area just trying to figure out how the game had changed dramatically in the past two days what? yeah i thought the obstacles in the maps actually would have changed the game a little bit more than they did um after a day or two i really didn't notice that much of a difference did it? Did any of the changes uh, like switch which maps you like and don't like? Downfall. I didn't like it at first because the windows were so lit up, but that's been fixed since. Other than that, not really. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, quarantine is really hard for me, so it still continues to be hard. Yeah, I wouldn't say it changed my liking, but quarantine, I think, changed the most as far as uh, the different routes you can take and stuff now with, like, the more cover in the southeast end. It changed up to a lot of different spots. And... Um, what maps do you guys absolutely hate? Any? You play any. Shout out to Jungle. <laughs> I love Jungle. Can, can we call that a map? Are we allowed? Get it out of here. I probably shouldn't say it, but I don't like Tanker. Mainly because there's, like, I don't have any call-outs for it. I mean, what do I say? Left, right. I don't, I don't miss. Yeah, gotcha. well, one of my one of my teammates he he gives like ship callouts. I'm like, dude. Yeah, nautical know. terms. <laughs> <laughs> we we tried that at first and it was so confusing. It was like, nope, we're not doing that. Yeah. So but I I like tanker because of how symmetrical it is. I mean, you can get flanked from anywhere. You can literally think mm. you're safe, and all of a sudden somebody's right behind you. Yeah, and you would say like beginners, they're like your big. The big ones that you guys are afraid to play or not afraid to play but like you know yeah i wouldn't put it that way but yeah they're definitely some of the hottest competition over there in the eu mm. uh they're it's just their play style it's so different than what we're used to playing over here in america and they're really good shots yeah so, um it's just it's it's different playing against them and at the same time they uh they know their things so well and they study us so well. You have to you have to really be careful of what you do and where you poke your head out. Right. Yeah, I know that there's, you know, always that the whole like, oh, the EU plays slow or what have you. Um, does that like, because I, I find that like a lot of the top teams, not that you guys are slow. I mean, I don't think anyone's as, as, as aggressive as like, you know, Danglers or Blaze. But it, do you really think that, like, they're, like, super slow, and does that affect you guys? Like, does it do what I think they're trying to do, you know, re wear, wear you guys down? I think a lot of it's, like, the first few minutes is just being patient because they're going to try to get nades out early. And if you're running right out like most teams do, you know you're going to get hit with it. So it kind of adapts how you play against them. You, you, at least, like, for, on Suburbia, for instance, I don't rush out in the middle for playing beginners or somebody because they're going to try to nade you the first yeah. couple minutes and try to get that man advantage quick. Yep, and that's the whole thing too. Is they are just they're trying to get any picks they can, and they're waiting for it. And if they get that pick, then it's a little easier for them to move. Um, I watched your game mix um, against Mayhem, mm -hmm. and it was really cool to watch. Um, because it, you game. know, yeah, I mean, they're you know formerly Stone Cold Killers. Um, they're like really cool guys. I always like playing with James Bach. I actually say Boyk because that's you and James Boyk me. Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was so crazy. And I know they're doing well. And there's some real other good teams. Like ha what has been surprising for you guys this season as far as teams well, go? No really big surprises. That Mayhem game was somewhat a one. Um, we didn't, it was our first time playing them. We didn't really expect uh, their play to be as slow as it was. Man, they uh, 
they utilize the time well and they utilize their sniper well as well oh god yeah that way i don't think definitely was playing but he's insane yep yeah, yeah for my understanding i think they had one reservist maybe two yeah. um but yeah they uh they played really well it was a fun game i wish i would have had my rift instead of that damn rift s <laughs> Well, but any other surprises for the new teams? Um, not really. I mean, because all our games have been pretty straightforward this season. That Mayhem has been the only team that we really haven't had practice playing against yet. So, what about you, Zach? Any like out, out the gate, you're like, oh, I did not expect them to be doing so well. Well, I think the not so much that, but the teams we're playing and a lot of the roster changes have happened. Like SMC with uh, Trip and Miracle Dev. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be different than how we've played them in the past, and then. Mm -hmm. Uh, same thing with Mayhem and then Blaze when they got Silent Knight. I mean, it, when we played Blaze, he was a lot more aggressive than uh, we're used to just because he was flanking every time and it worked for him most of the time. So yeah. that's something we kind of weren't ready for, I guess, just because I'm not used to thinking like we're playing Animal House, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Silent Knight is uh, he's great. I always like to say, like, go Cap. And, oh, I always actually like that in general when I, if I tell any – any league player, I'm like, you should go cap, which is ridiculous because that's what you're trying to do. But then when they do, it's pretty awesome. And Silent Knight is one of those guys that would be like, you should go cap, and then he does. So he's a he's a good capper. Any last uh, thoughts? You guys have any words for uh, new players coming in? Um, you want to say something to your competition? To new players, just be diligent, be patient. Um ask if you got questions ask nine out of ten league players would be happy to answer any of your questions mm, who's that 10th player mm, i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah kind of the same thing I mean, we just need more people to play and uh don't feel scared to join comp lobbies and that kind of thing we just need to broaden i think as far as competition just you know global kim motherfuckers <laughs> all day right <laughs> you guys are, gonna, are you you're gonna take it this season Oh, you yeah. know, we're gonna we're gonna do our thing. We're gonna try. If some if a team had to dethrone you in who? the US. If a team had to dethrone you in the US, who do you think is gonna be? You're looking right at Zach in the eyes. <laughs> oh, that's that's a hard question right there. We we don't like being dethroned. Of course not. I, I don't I don't put thought into that kind of stuff. Okay. You don't wanna you don't wanna put the energy out there. No, no, it's negative. All right. So Zach, obviously you think G Men. G Men can be thrown. Yeah, I mean we were close. One more round of Bizarre, we would have had him. ESL. Did come down to that one <laughs> round too. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. We had the momentum. That was a heartbreaker. But hey, we were happy to make it that far because uh just beating beginners was big the first day. Yeah. And uh thanks for giving me your time to do this. Who should I get next? Hmm. Maybe I should get Irish Wolf. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> He's a fun guy. He might commit to the interview, then bail out, and then commit again. Yeah. <laughs> he jobs it out all the whole time. I'd say get sickness. Sickness? Yes. Yeah, okay. Sick him. <laughs> he's he's insane with the caps. Do you guys have cappers on your team? Like, who's like the de designated capper? On ours, it's me and Brass. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, on us, uh, I'll just say Global Kim don't cap. Yeah, that's what everyone says, right? Yeah, I'll let them believe it. They can, they can believe it. <laughs> yeah, no, I liked when people said that, and then Thunder went to go cap. <laughs> I like that answer back. Yep. We got got to prove them wrong every once in a while. Yeah, of course. Yeah, every once in a while. All right. Um. Okay. Well, that's all we have for the hive. Um. Thank you to Mixologist Global Chem and Zach Fontaine from G Men for joining us today. Uh, if you have any questions, um, reach out to them. They are on social media, so they say. Uh, and watch out for their games on um, on VRML. It's a uh, Twitch channel one. And there's two and three, but these guys are they're the top, so you'll catch them on the main channel. Uh, well, that's all we got. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah.